Mitchell and Brad in a moment, he should be uh, halving his width there on the cut. It's just too thick, clumping. And as we mulch, it's just a uh, four feet high grass to get through there. And that's the thing. Another important thing that he's doing there, he's slowing down, which he's doing really well. Another quick tip with crop. The mower's set at three inches. I've just jacked it right up to four inches because when they're this long, sometimes you do have to double cut. The idea is you, you take it up to the highest notch because it's just, we've just done a couple of passes, it's just too thick, too, too wet still. Even though the sun's shining, it's a beautiful day, it's not enough uh, to stop this matting up effect. Now you hear the mower's trying to start, it's all clogged, but it's just a lot of grass clippings caught up under that deck. So when it's this long, sometimes you're at the highest setting on a residential little mower like this, it doesn't matter what you do. So the idea of this, we take it over the top, run over the whole yard at one, one time, one passing, at the highest setting, get rid of the bulk. And if you're bagging, you'd fill a green bin in three passes on this lawn. So this is just another reason like, it's not ideal to have it this long and mulch down, but if it is, take it to your highest setting and then slowly progress down. So what you want to do is adjust that height and it'll just mulch a lot easier for you. Q&A, you can say what it is. Uh, picking up where we left off. <laughs> the mulchy mowers that we use, there's a big reason why we mow taller versus mowing shorter. There's a lot of things um, you can look at as well with fertilizing all the time versus mulching it and reusing that nitrogen. Um, I just wanted to do a little side note video and talk about those three main topics. Yeah. So it's mowing tall versus mowing short is the first yeah. so, question. Daniel, why do people want to mow higher? So when you do this, you're protecting the roots from the heat, from the cold. Um, you send your roots down deeper. So pretty much whatever height you've got the grass blade at, three times that, is how far down the deep the roots will go deep into the soil. So it's give or take, but if you were to pull it out and had one strand, there's been uh, a lot of experiments done with it where it shows the root systems and it, it coincides with that rule. There's a rule of, like general rule of thumb, three times the length of your blade of grass is how deep your roots are gonna go. So, so that's a major contributor to staying green all year round and also protecting itself in drought situations, in cold situations, and things like that. Did I miss anything? I know you're pretty on top of that. I don't know what I'd Next one will be fertilising all the time versus reintroducing the nitrogen to the soil. All right, so same deal. Just with mulching, you've got all that nutrients going back into the soil. It's a natural process where all the mic microorganisms will start attacking all that decomposing green matter that gives your nutrients straight to your root systems and instead of putting the fertilizer down then bagging up all your leaf clippings where all that fertilizer is still in the leaf blades but a lot of people just take it away and they don't realize the harm they're actually doing to their lawn um, and that's just another general thing touching on the height 
in Australia, a lot of people seem to like two inches. Um, the majority of my clients are now around the three inches to three and a half, some people, based on the fact that over the time I've looked after their lawns, it's established it beautifully and it's the best it's ever looked and they didn't understand why until I explained what I've been doing and how I only give the option to mulch because I, I mulch all year round and never have a problem with thatch because you take that one third rule of taking one third of the grass blade off and not any more than that, it's gonna mulch up perfectly. You can go a little bit more than that with certain um, grass types, but yeah. So you've got a paragraph here about your worst problem is going to be army grubs, mole crickets. Yeah, so when I've got my lawns and they always look pristine, the biggest problem I face is grubs. Um, army grub is the main one, or army worm we call it. And you've also got mole crickets and all these other little critters that just seem to love getting into the nice healthy lawn. You think they could go and see someone down the road but they haven't got the most healthy of some lawns but they prefer the healthy lawns. So that's the biggest problem you'll find once you do get a nice healthy lawn. The bugs come come running towards your lawn after it's uh, precious nutrients that you've provided. It's just to get a uniform carpet like finish that you can go on it barefoot and just lay on it and love the cushiony feel of grass. It's so worth it to have. And these little practices, the methods are so simple. It, it's unbelievable. No, I just get that word for word. <laughs> <laughs> the methods are, they, they're just, it's so easy. But a lot of people just don't have the time. And I feel that little niche and little pocket by providing a service. But also going above and beyond, it's not just lawn mowing it. It's purely lawn care all around. It, it's covering and it's looking for the army grub seed pods that are underneath your eaves and things like that. So just little tips and hints along the way that I give my clients that also help combat any of these problems that may arise. Have I missed anything, Bradley? Covered everything, mate. Oh, beautiful. All right, well, if I uh, have edited this right, the drain footage would have been before this little snippet of video. That would have shown the devastation I was talking about earlier with the fires and just how great a job the fires have actually done in saving properties. It's coming within metres of properties, sometimes right on the fence line, and, and they've saved like hundreds of properties. And